gon' give it to ya Fuck way for you to get it on your own X gon' deliver to ya Yo, what's up, nerds? Welcome back to Tea Time with your favorite software engineer. If you guys haven't already, check out my channel, subscribe. I post leak code problems a few times a week. Um, I know I've been gone, super busy with work and stuff, but so today we're gonna go over a permutation string. Somebody actually requested I do this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I actually enjoyed it. We're gonna about permutations and substrings and what the topic is. I'm not going to jump right into it. Um, it's under related topics, but so let's read the description. Given two strings S1 and S2, write a function to return true if S2 contains the permutation of S1. In other words, one of the first strings permutations is the substring of the second string. So right here, they give us SB. Well, first we need to know what permutation means. Um, permutation means just like a different combination. So you, we wanna see if any combination of this substring or this string exists in a substring in this in s2 so a substring just means it has to be contiguous so we know we're looking for a two character substring and we want to see if either a b or b a exist in any substring so it could be like in this substring um, or this substring and so on so right there when i say we have to move that substring that's a it's called a moving or sliding window so that's how we're going to solve this. We're going to use a sliding window. So the first thing we're going to want to do is create a arrays for each um, string and calculate the character. So we're going to go on to calculate all the characters, all the frequency of the characters for the first substring. And we're going to want to do it the, um, the length for the second array. We're going to want to do it the length of the first string because that's our window. And then we're just going to move it along. Um, and if the frequencies of both the arrays equal each other, then we do know we have a permutation of S1 in a substring of the second string. I know that's like a lot of permutations and substrings and stuff, but this will make more sense as I go along. So we're gonna do, like I said, windows. So we're gonna do E and I. Um, I'm not even gonna go all the way to I and O because it would just take too much uh, space on the whiteboard. So we're going to do E and I. Um, the frequencies are not the same. So we're going to go ahead and move to this uh, window. Um, we're going to have to take off E because we're not in that sliding window anymore. So E is now zero. Um, we're going to add I still there. And we're going to add D. So one, the frequencies are still not the same. So we're going to go ahead and move the window to here so let's go ahead and take off d and then we're going to add b um, the frequencies still aren't the same so let's go to the uh, the next window b a so let's go ahead we have to we already took off d um a and these frequencies are the same so in this case we would return true um i'm just going to go over it real quick example two this wouldn't work because in the in all of the windows there's no the frequencies wouldn't be the same because we have where b is which we need because it's in the first string there's only it's only next to d and o so those are the only two possible substrings with b so we know that um it's it's not possible so let's go ahead okay so the first thing we're going to do is the base cases so what are the base cases um if s1 is greater than s2 then it's not possible for any permutation to be inside of s2 and if um s2 is empty then that's it's also not possible um but if s1 is empty then it's going to be automatically true so let's go ahead and fill all those in so if s1 dot length is greater than s2 dot length or s2 dot length equals zero we're going to return false and if s1 dot length equals zero we're going to return true and so now let's go ahead and create the the length so x equals s1 dot length and y equals s2 that length i could have done this up ahead that would have made, above it would have made it easier um so now we're just going to want to do the first window basically fill in the frequencies for 
Um, well, actually, no, we need to create the arrays. So what is it? Um, I have it right here. I suck with remembering syntax sometimes. Okay, int array one equals, and we're gonna wanna give it a length, each of them a length of 26 for all the characters in the alphabet. Uh, so 26 and um, int array two equals new int 26. Okay, so now we're gonna wanna loop through and do the first um, window basically. So we're gonna do fill in array one completely and we're gonna fill in the first window for array two. So i equals zero. And we're just, to do this, we're just gonna do i less than x for the length of the first string. i plus plus. Um, so we're gonna do array one s one dot car at i and we're gonna do minus a to get us the ASCII value. So since we're subtracting a from in the first instance, this is a, it would give us the zeroth index. This is the zeroth index. So I'm gonna write that out, zeroth index. So a minus a gives us zero. So, and then we just need to increment that in, um, index by one. And then, so we're just gonna do the same thing for a two, but for string two, I minus a plus plus. All right, so now we have the first array filled um, and we're just gonna want to loop through the last of the windows. So we're gonna do I equals M, not M, X, and I less than Y. Um, y, Y, because we're just, that's how many windows are left. We're starting at X. So there's, uh, I don't know, two minus, what is this? eight so six windows left to calculate um so first we're going to want to see if we already filled them in they it, it might be possible that in the first window that they're equal um we don't know so we're going to want to do arrays dot is equals i believe it is equals let me ch double check Arrays is equal Java. Ray dot equals equals. So I was wrong. Equals uh, array one and array two. If and then we need to put this into the if statement. So and if they are equal return true and so now we got to think what do we want to do since we're going to be moving the the window over here um we're only going to be wanting we have this is exactly what we want this is going to say the same so we just need to update this one so when we're sliding it along first we're going to want to remove um the previous one so we're going to do ray two s two car at uh, i minus x minus a. So basically, if this is our window, um, and we're going to be adding d, but we also want to subtract e from it, because we have to pop it off in the window, it's no longer in the window. So and then for we want to add d. So we're going to just do s2 dot car at I minus a plus plus and and then again we just want to see if arrays dot is or equals array one array two return true else return false so let's see if this works oh sweet works all right usually it makes syntactical errors so there you guys have it um let's go over runtime and space complexity real quick so the runtime is um it's going to be the length of this string so you'd say you know o of s2 um so it is 
linear and because uh, we're just looping through it um, completely since that's the bigger string. We don't want to calculate S1 because S1 is probably smaller, so we're doing S2. And then the space complexity, uh, it's just O of 1. I mean, we created ways, but those aren't data structures. So O of 1. And that's all I got for you guys. Hope you guys learned something. And if you did, smash that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.